Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant. In today's video, we're going to talk about my beloved Nikon D90. And is it still a good option to purchase heading into 2024? Well, I think the answer is yes. But let's roll that intro and let's get straight into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, the Nikon D90 heading into 2024. Last year, I made the same video around this sort of time, the Nikon D90 heading into 2023. And I must say that probably is the most popular video on my YouTube channel. People absolutely love this little camera. People keep snatching them up left, right and center. There's a real nostalgic vibe attached to people and this camera. So I thought I would make a new updated video, you know, heading into 2024 and why this camera is still a great option. Okay, first on the list, it's a time tested sensor. The image quality, the results are absolutely classic. So it's only a 12.3 uh, megapixel sensor, CMOS sensor, APS-C of course, so it's a crop sensor camera, it's not a full frame camera. Nevertheless, there is something about this sensor and the images it produces are out of this world. As I said in the top of the video, very nostalgic and people have a big emotional attachment to this particular camera. If you're after sheer resolution, well, this is not the camera to get. You know, we're going well over 15 years old now with the Nikon D90, so it just can't compete with the new mirrorless cameras that are out there. But if you're looking for images with a vibe, a filmish kind of look, great JPEGs, good raw files, heaps of room to play in Lightroom, then the Nikon D90 is the way to go. Okay, next on the list, the ergonomics and the handling of the Nikon D90. Hey everyone, Grant from the future here. Look, I know I say Nikon and you know, I'm Australian, I'm meant to say Nikon. However, my uh, photography teacher back in high school was American and he would always say, grab your Nikon. So it sort of stuck. Can we all move over this? I know I do say Nikon, I'm meant to say Nikon. Who really cares? Let's get back to the video. Out of all my cameras, I still say that this camera here is the best handling out of all of them. The ergonomics, it just fits perfectly in my hand. Everything is where it needs to be. It's just a great fit. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. You know, it's great for just carrying around in one hand and grabbing, you know, candid shots and stuff like that. It doesn't stick out a lot in public. It doesn't look like a massive old school DSLR like the Nikon D700 or any other camera like that. So you're not gonna draw a lot of attention to yourself with this particular camera. Especially if you put on a lens like the 35mm f1.8 prime lens. This is the only lens I've got for this camera now. I use it all the time. It is just a super lightweight ergonomical package. It probably is the best handling camera I own. Okay, now let's talk about optics and lenses. I briefly mentioned before that I only use the 35mm f1.8 and that really is for creative reasons. You know, I like to stick with one lens with this camera. However, the DX range of prime lenses is through the roof and super cheap. Not to mention all the zoom lenses that you can pick up for the Nikon Crop Series cameras. Absolutely fantastic. They go as little as $100. Great zoom lenses with a lot of variety, a lot of reach. If that's your sort of thing, if you need more reach, you know, the DX range of zoom lenses are through the roof. And as I said, I stick with one lens, the 35mm f1.4. So essentially it's a nifty 50 in the crop sensor format. And we're gonna talk more about that later. 
Okay, the optical viewfinder. This is fantastic. Now, being used to mirrorless cameras by Lumix Micro Four Thirds Systems, I'm a bit spoiled, you know, I can compose, I can get all my shots, I can expose my image uh, within the viewfinder and the back screen. However, there's something about the old school um, optical viewfinder, through the eye, what you see is what you get. I don't know, there's something special about that. And the old school DSLR autofocus is super snappy. There's a real joy from framing your shots with the optical viewfinder and then quickly looking and seeing if you've got an exposure. Adjust your settings, shoot, recompose, all that sort of stuff. It really does slow you down. And in a way, the optical viewfinder really does bring back that old school feel of photography. Okay, creativity. This is one I wanna talk a lot about. Um, for me, the Nikon D90 really does bring out my creativity when it comes to photography. I love this little combo here for creativity. It really, really does make me work for the shots. I love using this little camera for you know photography walks and street photography, and its limiting features really, really do push your creativity. Using your feet more, really composing your shots. I don't know, there's something special about old DSLR cameras that really bring back the joy and really push your creativity. And as I said, at the top of this video, the image results that the sensor gives, there really is a joy seeing the results, you know, really boosting your creativity using the Nikon D90. Okay, affordability. This is another big one. This camera is cheap. In Australia, you can pick these things up for about $200, so that's super cheap, in good working condition. You know, a lot of people bought the Nikon D90 brand new back in the day. They used it once or twice at a birthday party and then they put it in the shelf. When they do a clean out, they realize they still have that camera and they get rid of it. You do have to watch out though, some people are pricing them up still around the $800 mark. Don't buy one for that amount of money. Personally, in Australia, I think if you're spending just over $200, you're gonna get a great bargain. And the value you get from everything that I've said previously in this video, it really just can't be beat. Not to mention all the DX lenses and the Nikon lenses. I picked up this Nikon DX lens, oh, I wanna say just over $100. I really can't remember, it was cheap anyway. Okay, nostalgic reasons. Now, personally for me, the Nikon D90 was the first sort of real camera I ever bought back in the day. So I graduated high school in 2000. I did photography in high school. We were the last bunch of kids or students shooting film. And that led me to the Nikon D90 about 15, oh man, yeah, about 15 years ago now. And you know, this was the first camera that actually made me money. Not this particular Nikon D90, I've only had this one for a couple of years now. Getting this camera again a couple of years ago has really you know, brought back a lot of nostalgia. And I think there's something about that. I think a lot of people are passing this particular camera down to their kids, down to their grandchildren, you know, for them to get into photography. You know, it's a great hand-me-down camera and it's got a lot of sentimental value. And I know that for a fact because most of the comments in my old Nikon D90 video, they all have a lot of nostalgia in them. There's a lot of sort of, you know, emotional connection to this camera and them and their lives. So yeah, there is something very special about the Nikon D90. In my opinion, I think it is the most emotional camera. It tugs on people's heartstrings and I don't know why. I've only learned this over the last year from reading all those comments. But yeah, the Nikon D90, you know, people love this little thing. And I do too. So, you know, if you like this sort of stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. That helps me out a lot. Do you use the Nikon D90? Are you planning to pick up a Nikon D90 in 2024? Let me know down below. Please give the video a big thumbs up. That helps me out a lot too. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.